For more, let's bring in Fox News contributor DeRoy Murdoch, along with the host of the First Class Fatherhood podcast, Alec Lace. Uh, DeRoy, there's much discussion about ha what happens between now and Monday. Andy McCarthy thinks that the size of this uh, bond amount would be maybe reduced to 100 million because of the details of this case, because it's just so egregious. But I think politically, maybe Trump and the campaign want Tish James to try and put or begin to put her hands on the Trump's hard assets, because that is a huge win for them. You know, every time they've gone after Trump legally, he just goes up, up, and away. Uh, and maybe Trish James will get some, you know, great endorphin rush if she does this, but it's probably going to lead to Trump going up another two or three points. And I want to know if she, you know, seizes uh, uh, Mar-a-Lago, seizes uh, Trump Tower, whatever. Uh, does that mean the residents who live there can't go inside? The people who run the businesses in, inside those facilities uh, can't come to work? Those people can get fired? Is, is she going to uh, carry that uh, uh, consequences of those sorts of actions on her back? Uh, the other thing I'd do if I were Donald J. Trump is uh, get, in touch, get some constitutional lawyers to file an Eighth Amendment action on this is under the excessive uh, fines clause. This is right next to, uh, to cruel, unusual punishment. If you have fines that are so yeah. high, they basically will bankrupt you. Uh, that's a violation of the Constitution. They ought to be in court fighting that, that particular even constitutional the, ground. Absolutely. Even at the state level, it's a violation yeah, of without, the Constitution. That's right. you know, Alec, you run in a, a bunch of different circles. What do you hear about the politics of this? The people that you talk to, do they support, even the liberals, the Democrats support What's happening to Donald Trump? Absolutely not. Everybody, everybody sees what they're doing to Donald Trump, especially when you have New York City. We have people getting shot in the subway. You got uh, squatters sitting in homes and Letitia James going after Donald Trump. But listen, Donald Trump would love to sell these stocks faster than the GOP sold out the American people today, but we know he can't do that right away. But this, I think, is a big win for Trump. And I think, you know, you got to watch out. Watch over your friends that have stage three or higher Trump derangement syndrome today because they're probably going to be doing pretty poorly today. But, yeah, this is a big win for him one way or the other to see him get this kind of evaluation. It's funny because they threw him off Twitter, banned him from social media. He starts his own company. Now he's got a $3 billion windfall. So props to Trump. Well done. Uh, and you just beautifully set up. Um, like the Trump derangement, there is no greater poster person for this. We want to get your take on this failed attempt at prop comedy. Joy Reid tries to calculate Trump's finances for him. Check it out. Look, I'm no mathematician, okay? I'm, no, I'm not a mathematician, but let, if I just do some, some just quick back of the envelope calculated. $454,000, okay, $454,000. Uh, divided by 814, um, let's see, let's see, 814, 600, okay, carry the two, let's see, um, yeah, that means that Donald Trump and his, uh, his Magalites will only need to sell, hold on a second, carry the three, we'll just, you know, to carry the, uh, they'll only need to sell 557 tickets to settle his debts with New York, unleash the Kraken. Uh, I have a lot to say about that, but one, people of her thinking, this is why the entire country is so economically and financially screwed to hell. <laughs> Well, you saw her doing that wacky thing with the calculator. I think the sad thing is that when uh, Judge Engeron sat down and came up with this $454 billion, he probably used the same calculator. He was pulling his numbers out of the air. He's the same guy who looked at Mar-a-Lago, which is this beautiful 22-acre property with all this, uh, you know, gardens and buildings and, and fountains and pools and all that. Said it was worth $18 million. Right up the road, there's a two-acre parcel with just grass. No buildings, no anything. That's worth 200 so explain to me how Mar-a-Lago, which is 10 times bigger with all those buildings on that and whatnot, is worth 10% of what the empty property is up the street. I think Engeron is using, borrowing Joy Reid's calculator. I think he might have. Doesn't make any sense. I want to do this, though, because uh, as we looked in November, Time Magazine has some insight to Biden's political future, saying, quote, if the election were held tomorrow, more than 30 pollsters, strategists, and campaign veterans from both parties tell time Biden would likely lose. So in other words, Biden's stuck in the mud, especially in swing states. That could mean even more trouble for him as independent candidate RFK Jr. is gaining momentum. He's got like, he's, he's heading the, 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 the double digit range, which is crucial in these battleground states. Alec, um, again, the, we're, we're light years away from the election, but uh, it would be nice if Joe Biden would actually change gears and start looking out for the middle class and the American people as opposed to the left wingers in his party. Yeah, RFK Jr. is not Biden's problem right now. Biden's problem right now is the inflation that's crushing small businesses. Yeah. It's the economy that's killing the families. It's men using the bathroom with your daughter. That's what's hurting Joe Biden right now, and it's not going to be RFK. The people see it, and they're sick and tired of it. I think the one demographic that, are, that is killing the Republicans is dead voters. We can't seem to make any, make any ground with dead voters. We're going to have to work on that if we want to win in November. <laughs> we have to improve the dead voters. 
Alec Lace, Troy Murdoch, thank you guys both for being here. We appreciate it.